Inside a fiction and poetry classroom at Ballantyne Hall in, Vin- in Indiana University. Like, oh uh, my gosh. Like, if you were going to say that poetry was like that, like, holy shit. It's like so fucking horrible, you dumbass. Like, oh my god. Nobody wants to be that way. So who wants to share his poem? I thought it was very nice. But anyways, who wants to share the poem next? Yes, you. Hi, so my poem is about the evolution of time. Uh, if you were all curious. Time just stands so still. When I once decided to go out and see my family, no, I used to think for the my... union, we say, fight, fight, fight for the union, okay? Oh we're here out standing today. We're all here fight, fight, standing fight today. Union, okay? Fight, fight, fight for the union, okay? We are here standing today. Fight, fight, fight for the union, okay? Today. We are here standing today. Fight, fight, fight for the union, okay? Fight, fight, fight for the union, okay? We are here fight for the union, okay? We are here fight for the union, okay? Fight, fight, 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 fight for the union. Tell my crap. We suck my hair. 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 Suck my hair
Shout out to Rodney Margerson. He's tested positive for COVID. He's our coworker at Blue Magazine. Wish him all the prayers in the world. The guy is amazing. He's got COVID right now. And not only that, folks, but knowing someone who's had COVID myself, I mean, it's such a hard, hard, hard time in America given that part. And yes, folks, we I have just some very important and exciting news to announce to you today. I'm trying my best to get through social. It's just hard because I don't have an iPad. But we are able to we are able in May to promote this podcast on Twitter. So yes, Twitter, YouTube, anywhere else where you get your streaming. I've even thought about Twitch. We are going to be streaming live starting in May, probably every day. I'm still figuring it out. First of all, folks, this will also be our last show right before finals week. There will be no other show that I will be airing after this. So yes, listen to us at any time. I am your host, Braden Lentz, and let's get straight to this uh, important topic, as you might have learned from the skit today. All right, folks, volunteer victim, astrician et monodel. <laughs> Learning a little of my friends, folks. <sighs> Messi buku myself. Yeah, fuck! Fuck! The fucking union! The Graduate Workers Association of fucking Indiana University. Oh, fuck you, okay? Fuck you, little crybabies. Little fucking crybabies. You're all about the fucking crybabies anyway. I don't give a fuck what you say. But here's the thing, folks. They're fighting for equal pay. At a time when they want to feel like they're essential. We call you essential because you're on the front lines every single day. But the matter of fact is you guys are just crummy graduate students. You honestly think this is going to be a hell of a ride. Like this is some transgender athlete coming to Indiana or something. That's how it feels like on this campus with all of this. And yes, yes, I have two teachers that are graduate students. But I'm like, you're making $29,000 a year. That should be reasonable for you until you get a full-time job. You need a full-time fucking job. I don't give a fuck. I mean, come on. Either work there or be a professor or just pull your pants up, as Barb Stork would say. Females, get your booty straps going. Pull your pants up and quit acting like a total bitch-ass nigga. Because that's what they're acting like. They're acting like bitch-ass niggas. But yes, folks, I support the administration. And here's why. I support the administration because looking at the fine details of this stupid rally that's going to be on April 13th. So if any of you are in the Indiana area, if you're an IU student, you can go if you want to. But I don't care about this bullshit. It's bullshit. Unbelievable bullshit. And let me tell you. You're getting paid the average for graduate students at any other school. This has been a problem everywhere across the United States. But guess what, folks? I feel like $30,000 is better than making at least $90,000 and losing your benefits, losing your programs, losing your financial aid. You don't need to lose any of this stuff. It's a college student. That's just the thing. College students are getting paid, or not getting paid, but college students across America are getting an equal amount of, are getting an amount of financial aid that can be big or small, depending on income. Especially for me, I come from a low income background. So for me, I get more financial aid, but then some people get less financial aid or nobody gets financial aid. You got to pay out of the pocket. You should be grateful. You should be grateful to be at IU. This is a prestigious institution across the world. I mean, we're renowned after all means. But you guys, you fucking graduate students, you fucking crybabies. <laughs> Mommy, give me my silver spoon. <laughs> That's how I feel about you guys, fucking crybabies. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. But here's the thing. You're making an average for most graduate students on this campus. You should be grateful to be here. And the students that are protesting, holy shit. You're being brainwashed by the liberal government. You're being brainwashed 
by CNN telling you that if you're a truck driver, you're getting paid less and getting no safety requirements. That's wrong. That's something to protest. Truck drivers not getting safety, but not this. It's been a problem for years on multiple campuses. But holy cow, these people are crybabies. They're making $29,000. And yes, they're putting in $100,000 of work. But they knew that before they signed up for it. If you want to be a graduate student and you want to succeed, then why on earth are you not using your powers? You are a fucking graduate student. Not a, not a briefcase of $90,000. That comes later. Either you get a job or you get a job. Or be a professor. Be a researcher. Work in the research department. I mean, for God's sakes, there's one guy. His name is Brian. He teaches for Brian Dahlberg. Teaches for Intro to Cognitive Science. Does a discussion every week. They're really pissing at your pockets here at IU. They're really picking. They're really picking at your pockets. They're taking money out of you left and right because they're crooked. They're arrogant and they're disrespectful and they're fucking idiots. They're idiots. That's what I think about this whole bullshit. Because here's the thing, you knew you were going to make 100000 you need to get a fucking job, like get a full-time job for God's sakes. You don't need to be a graduate student in general. I think four years is enough and varying on the degree. Yes, you could get a six-year master's or you could get an eight-year doctorate. If you want to be a doctor, a psychiatrist, a teacher, a therapist, those require that stuff. But some of these kids are graduate students because, well, they're graduate students. And I have thought about being a graduate student. I've decided I will be and I'll major in social work, which I think would be some pretty influential work, especially given my background. And not only that, but I want to help other kids with autism. And these people just want to pick a fence, not on the fucking lane, all over the sample gates and just submerge the sample gates with students just brainwashed. them. like, look, you look inside the brain of a democratic college student. What do you think? What do you think? If they're rich and they're white and they got blonde hair or whatever, they got smarts, they got looks, but they don't have smarts. They got stupidity. They got wokeness. They got Disney. They got fucking silver spoons in their mouths. They got money. They got everything. They got everything as a child. They got everything. Soccer practice, football practice, baseball practice, whatever. Softball practice, soccer practice. Oh my God, and their moms are just total bitches. I'm just saying, like, fuck you, Nancy Bosco. Fuck you, Nancy Bosco. I should have married your daughter. <laughs> That's another day. That's another story. But yeah, folks, oh my God. <laughs> that is another story. Hmm. Should be dating your daughter. Anyways. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Anyways, yes, I just mean the brain of a college student is woke. I mean, completely woke from head to toe. And here's the thing. When you get to college, you got your little mom, you got your mommy giving you whatever you want when you want it. And guess what? You, that's what you are going to see. You're going to see black people when your grandparents silently hide their racism. You're going to see white people who have different political beliefs. And the moment you hear about Ben Shapiro or Jordan Peterson, these kids just flip the fuck out. I mean, holy cow, anything about race, sex, gender, politics, right-wing opinions are shut out by the left. And that part I get so tired of. But yes, this is woke, woke as woke can be, this strike. This is woke as can be full of a bunch of spoiled, rotten kids that have absolutely no idea how to be living a normal fucking life. There. You want me to say any more about it? I'm just going to say, Pamela Wynn's doing a decent job about this. She actually informed all of us about the stupid bullshit that's happening on this campus. And guess what, folks? I'm not going to this rally, not going to take pictures. I don't even know what I'm supposed to do for the week in terms of my bloom job. But yes, I'm not going to this protest because one, it's brought a bunch of toxic energy and all these 
spoiled kids, spoiled rich kids, or just being just total bitches about it. They, they're they going to cry if they make less than 90000 a year because that's how much her dad makes in like five years. So that's how much her dad makes $90,000 or $120,000 a year. That's nothing. I mean, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. That's nothing for a college student. You shall be making twenty nine thousand to thirty five thousand dollars a year, and that y'all shall buy. And what I was saying earlier with Nick Avocado, Avocado was that these kids are just like him, and the sauce that dripped on his shirt that resembles woke culture, and all these I you spoil rotten kids, all with their money and all this bullshit. It resembles their arrogance. It resembles their disrespect, and it resembles. This strike resembles the weakness of higher education in America today. I mean, hell, if you could put a girl that lived in the suburbs and give her a Rhodes Scholarship because you, because she came from a poor background to the transgender athlete that swam at UPenn and just won a national championship, you can have a man winning in a national championship for women's sports. And then you have Mark Emmert being a bitch. And then you have the new arrival of just new students of color that are coming in, like myself, coming in, probably first generation, sometimes very, very educated. And then they're being subjected to racism because the schools are historically white institutions. And guess what the problem is with HBCUs? There is no funding. And I would love to help HBCUs like Grambling State. They just got rid of their volleyball program. Howard has crummy dorms. There's a lot worse places to go to. Countries don't even have colleges, kids. And I'm going to play you something. There's only one thing that I could play for you. The corporate world is going to get a lot more harder than this. In your strike, you can't strike against a corporation. Lehman Brothers shut down because, while well, they weren't getting funding. That's the problem. No, Lehman Brothers was involved in one of the worst financial crises in America, and no one protested it. They just it hit them out of the blue. That teaches you for life. Because there are companies... They don't give a fucking shit about you. Nobody. That's the problem. Got a bunch of rich kids with their freaking parents who are spoiled rotten. Like, oh my God. I saw this one kid. Her name's Emma Watson. And she's like an IU medium school major. And tragically, her parents were there at this uh, this banquet for IU uh, scholarships or whatever for the media school i just got my my certificate today thank you to the media school but yeah you look at everybody in that room inside the president's hall or whatever and you can just look at them and they're all rich and spoiled rotten that's that's all i'm gonna say and they also wore suits and all that stuff too but in the end folks sorry to ramble on for hours but holy shit this is just left as left as can come woke can come and i Oh, I thought someone was calling me for a minute. No, sorry about that. Yeah, we're going to be right back. And yes, folks, this is so sad to see in America today. Higher education is just full of crap today. And guess what, folks? We're living in some pretty, pretty, pretty dark times, especially right now in America and all over the world, including in Russia and Ukraine. But just remember, in all these other countries, they're a lot worse than what it is at Indiana University and anywhere else in the country. I agree with the administration. Go at them. We'll be right back. Come here, got 10 minutes to get this on my desk. Now! Wrapped up in a corporate life, going to work, get there on time. 7 a.m., drive my kids to school. No one education won't get him through. So despondent to the world, it's more troubled for you boys and girls. Getting wrapped up with this corporate monster, your taxes writ and the IRS has got you. Oh, you kids have it so privileged. Going to Starbucks, getting caught up through it. The fact your classes get you A's, only narcissism is getting you grades. So trapped in my desk and laptop, I'm waiting for a NASCAR, another pit stop. But my boss said at 3 p.m. is another meeting about his money, Graham. Of course you can try your best, but education is just bullcrap. Every day you can't get upset. That's right. They say these are the broken years when the medical bills just shed you tears. But I realize throughout the years, kids, it's more brutal out here.
And now, here is a sneak preview of one of the episodes of What If. And What If is a crime podcast that will be premiering in May of 2022 and featuring prime depicted by braided lutz and audio recordings that are meant for both dark comedy and humor. Here now is a sneak preview of episode one called June 17th, 1994, The Story of O.J. Simpson. And now we are in the trial room in 1995 where he will be acquitted. I'm here today to tell all you something that I think has been on my mind for a while. You know, during this whole trial, I've noticed something a little bit different with all of you all. And that is one thing. And you got to remember this for the rest of your life. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. I want all of y'all to know that right now. Because if y'all ain't going to go out there and to the public, if he didn't step her, which he didn't, the evidence proves thoroughhandedly that O.J. Simpson did not kill Nicole. If it doesn't fit, you must quit. Thank you, Water. All right, do the jurors have a duty? Do they have a selection yet? Yes, we do, Your Honor. Okay, so now what is your verdict? We will now present oh the God. lead juror to present <laughs> the conviction. <laughs> Los Angeles County Police <laughs> Department, <laughs> along with the California <laughs> State <laughs> Prison Patrol <laughs> and California Judicial System under Penal Code 27158422 under Orenthal James Simpson versus the plaintiffs of Nicole Brown Simpson and Rob Goldman. We, the jury, in the entitled action, find the defendant or or Orenthal James Simpson not guilty <gasps> yes! of the crime of murder <clears throat> expected on penal code two seven one eight four four one. And you are listening to the Let's Go Braden Podcast as we welcome you back to the show once again. We decided to take things a little smooth with all the chaos in the world. We have to also honor the people who had lost their lives from COVID. And just, we need to unwind as a nation. We need to unwind with each other. We need to unwind because there is a huge, I mean huge, mental health problem in this country. The Kroger has now turned into the fascism spot where the chaos just ensues in life and you're seeing people disgrace their jobs and people just getting total ape shit. The world is ape shit today. Don't you all agree? Because there's people sitting on the floor with no mask on and they're telling you to wear a mask. It's just crazy. There's no rules are enforced anymore. It just feels so sad. And the world that we used to live in in 2019 is not the same world that we lived in today. Which is why in June I'm making a documentary about how 2014 changed the way our world is today. Yes, and though it's schoolwork, that's going to come soon. Hello everyone. Take it in peaceful for a minute. Welcome to the Let's Go Braden podcast. I'm your host, Braden Lentz. And yes, folks, it's time to unwind for a minute. Ugh, stressful, stressful. Week because the world's going apeshit and everything else. It's just sad. It's really sad in the world we see today. It's not the same world I walked into 20 years ago. I was born in this country in 2001. Really isn't that, really isn't the same. Ah, <sighs> that felt relaxing for a minute. Oh my gosh. Why, well, hello everyone. This is Let's Go Brain Podcast once again. I want to kind of express my thoughts on the current situation in in uh, the judicial system with the brand new Supreme Court nominee. I think, yes, Biden's just trying to pull a big one like he's doing with the gun violence laws in America today. We could have had somebody Republican and then had a fair vote on just a Republican, but you had both sides talking about 
this woman, and she's incredibly intelligent. She went to Harvard, knew Matt Damon, and I mean, it was just it was just a lot of fun seeing her get elected. But it's also a tragedy for us Republicans to see this because, of course, it's the second black person to ever be in the judicial system besides uh, Clarence Thomas, which the woke culture of today, they say, oh, she's the first African-American when Clarence Thomas was the first African-American. And not only that, but you even date back years and years and years ago, there were hundreds of thousands of judicial uh, courts and lawmakers that were saying, elect black people to your district. Elect black people as the judge. And let me tell you something. There's been hundreds, just like Jackie Robinson. There were hundreds of thousands of players that wanted to sign up and play Major League Baseball, but he somehow broke the color barrier because one man believed in him. Well, there were a bunch of people that believed in people that were black or Hispanic or Latino. We just couldn't hire them because, of course, well, white people have been taking over the system for a long time. You think about it. This isn't just a Republican or Democrat issue. This is a centrist a world issue because... The white man was supposed to dominate the world. And now I love the culture, which, yes, people are spoiled as fuck. But I mean, hey, you got a lot of people out there today that are we're seeing more race and more diversity. But the common man doesn't want to win. But yeah, this is a big win for the Supreme Court, but a very low loss for the Republican Party, especially for us right wing uh talk show, radio hosts, podcast hosts, it's just really sad. To say it's sad is an understatement. I mean, she's a great pick. Um, Anyone in that pool, you had to pick one person to rescue everyone. I'd pick that. I'd pick her. Yes. She's a good judicial, uh, a good judicial judge and will make a great fit in the Supreme Court, unlike Clarence Thomas. And we don't know what's happening with him. Well, his wife is a complete psycho. Oh, she's a Karen. She's a Karen out of all Karens. And I respect her biracial relationship because my mom was actually in a biracial relationship with my father. And uh, my I, I love, here's the truth, interracial relationships help, born, help bond people more. Even when I did research for the Indiana Daily Student story about uh, Sidney Portier, that was a great story, influential The guy slaps a white man on TV, and that has never been done before. But it's about making history. It's about being the uh, odd man out in the room, standing out from the rest of the crowd. Because guess what? Even in sports media, it's mainly white people. Mainly white people getting jobs. Mainly white people getting shows done. Mainly white people on SportsCenter. You don't see many black people now on SportsCenter. As a matter of fact, it's just a woke dump of Disney product. And as a matter of fact, yes, I love their, I love some of their content. But no, I do not like, I mean, not the daytime shows. Those suck. But uh, some of their 30 for 30, those are great. E60, those are great. Sports in general depends on the sport. If it's the NBA, I don't want to see LeBron James take a knee. But yes, the Supreme Court made a good decision, but a bad decision for the Republican Party. But it just seemed like both sides were just kind of united in a way. It really did seem like that. But the majority voting for her to become the next judicial uh, judge of the Supreme Court, become a Supreme Court justice, which is a big win for us African Americans. It's a big, big win, especially for brown people. You don't see a lot of black or brown people in the Supreme Court except for Clarence Thomas. But, yeah, it's you don't see a lot of it even in power either. It's, this is not just a Republican issue. This is a world issue. This is a United States issue. We're seeing tragedy upon tragedy in the world and just hearing about something such as St. Peter's walking into a room and dominating in the NCAA tournament. Well, I think if St. Peter's could do it, us Americans of color can do it. We can do it. Fight, fight, and fight and get. Because if I was going to be a commentator, I've done the research. I'll be the first African-American man with autism and bipolar disorder to anchor an, 
a local or national news station, I could probably be the first black man with autism and bipolar to be an anchor of any news source of any sports content in America, in America, in the world. You don't hear about this. Not I, I'm just going to say it. Disability and race transcend beyond color lines and should. Because one dirty cop isn't going to do you justice. One dirty cop has damaged police systems. That's about demilitarizing the police and not defunding the police. Because we need, we need the police badly. Blue lives, black lives, white lives, all lives matter. And this is just a great example of just people in unity voting for the Supreme Court justice She's the first black woman to ever walk into the Supreme Court. And that is a big, big milestone, given how much America has kind of descended a little bit with hiring, especially you see it in the NFL, hiring people of color, which it just seems like you got a person with smarts who's white compared to someone who's black. As a matter of fact, it should transcend all cultures. I've seen white people that were dumb. I've seen black people that are dumb. I've seen Hispanics, Latinos, Mexicans. I have seen white people that are rich and black people that are rich and Hispanic people that are rich. I have seen all color, all color lines have riches. All color lines have poor, have uh, poverty. All color lines are just in union. They're both, they're all in union. They have their own communities. Every culture is full of trouble. It's about decluttering the trouble and building and rebuilding the pieces of the puzzle that we have left broken. That white people, some white people, and higher ups have left broken for years. Because it's very tragic that in a world with race and culture, they want to hire the person who's got more smarts and connections. When someone like me who's on uh, Section 8 can't get a lot of connections unless you go asking for them. You need recommendations. You need people on your side. And as a matter of fact, it's about rebuilding the puzzle of what is race in America and what is trust in America. Because this isn't, I, there's no need to say black people are stupid. There's no reason why to say white people are stupid. There is stupidity. There is racism. There is poverty. There is uh, rich wealth in all colors. All colors. Doesn't matter if you're blue. Doesn't matter if you're black. Doesn't matter if you're white. That's why I say all lives matter. Because if you're going to tell me that black lives, yes, we're prone to getting shot by the police. But white people are too. You're hearing about drug raids in the suburbs. Nobody's talking about that. Except WTHI and Terre Haute. But nobody is. But everyone wants to talk about the white man getting shot white man shooting the police or white man shooting the black kid. They want to talk about that. Get everyone all pissed off. Well, this is just a great milestone. And that's all I got to say on that. Just a great milestone for America. And it's time to rebuild. What is promise? Because the promise piece we're missing in just race in general. No one has promise anymore. Everyone wants to divide us. It's about about being united as one, just like in the hospitals, being united as one to take care of your other patients. We'll be right back. But it's a GI. But keep my last name out your fucking mouth. Seriously, was I really going to go there with our next skit? Uh, probably not. Well, I mean, by the time I was recording that, I thought I would be recording another podcast. But then, yes, life happened once again. And yes, we'll be right back as the next topic. Actually, I'm going to get to the next topic right now. Uh, it's about the women's basketball. Congratulations to South Carolina on just a tremendous victory. We didn't have much to talk about this week. But yeah, we, congratulations to South Carolina. But yeah, I just want to say one thing about those girls. Uh, well, we got a lot of tattoos. And, you know, you got to get a little girl out there. Uh, yeah, I don't know what her name is, but. 
you know, she tried to get out there, and she, she's the only white girl that's cute out there. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, there are a bunch of uh, nappy-headed hoes. <laughs> nappy-headed hoes, you kinds of guys, but and all these girls in women's basketball, they got nappy-headed hoes. <laughs> nappy-headed hoes. Nappy-headed hoes. That's all I have to say on that, and then the men's are more exciting. Yeah, well, <laughs> right, you know, Simon, I just need to say, oh, you know, it's uh, really exciting out there. Be as an angel now. Uh, you know, it's just tremendous. It's tremendous. Nappy headed hoes for life. Yep. All the women's basketball coaches and all the women's players are nappy headed hoes. Thank you so much. First full episode I've ever done. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Have a great rest of your day. And also, just remember facts do not give a shit about your feelings.